thin film interference. All right, did you ever see, you know, with bubbles, you see the different colors on the surface of the bubble, or if there's some gasoline or oil on your driveway or on the roadway, you're gonna see these different colors. Well, this is what we call thin film interference. So what's actually happen happening here? So white light incident on an oil film, okay? A colorful interference pattern is observed when light from the sun is reflected from basically the top and the bottom boundaries of a thin oil film. All right, so, so some more pictures showing thin film interference. And then they also use thin films to coat um, uh, camera lenses. So thin film interference is the interference of light waves reflected from two boundaries of a thin film. Thin films are used for anti-reflection coatings on camera lenses, microscopes, and other optical equipment. The bright colors of oil slicks and soap bubbles are also due to thin film interference. All right, so let's take a look at the reflection of this candle in a plane of glass. Now, the plane of glass has a thickness, right? So a light wave is partially reflected from any boundary between two transparent media with different indices of refraction. The light is partially reflected not only from the front surface of a sheet of glass, but also from the back surface as it exits the glass into air. This leads to two reflections. So let's review reflection of a wave pulse at a boundary. Here we're going from a less dense to a more dense. You can see that the index of refraction, I'm saying for N1 is one, for N2 is 1.40. Now, let's make observations about the reflected pulse. Now, you should see that the reflected pulse is out of phase with the incident pulse. It's inverted. We say it's gonna be in a sense pi shifted. Okay, and we're gonna be talking about that when we do our thin film calculations. But the frequency we know remains constant because frequency is always determined by the source. But the frequency, you know, as it goes into that first medium, as it goes into that second, or as it reflects back, the frequency doesn't change. It's always determined by the source. So let's derive some equations because we know that the frequency doesn't change. So comparing wavelengths in different media. So we know a relationship between frequency, wavelength, and speed. You know V equals frequency times wavelength. Well, let's put this equation in terms of frequency. So frequency equals V over lambda. Now, we know that the frequency of medium one will equal the frequency of medium two. So we can then set v1 over lambda 1 equals v2 over lambda 2, and we have a relationship that relates the wavelengths in the different media as compared to their speeds. So let's manipulate this equation. Let's put it in terms of the wavelength of medium 2. And when we do that, we get that the wavelength of medium 2 equals the wavelength of medium 1 times the speed in medium 2 divided by the speed in medium 1. All right, now, Let's write an equation in terms of indices of refraction. All right, so we do have an equation that relates speed and in indices of refraction. N equals C over V. Well, what we can do, we can put that equation in terms of V. And remember here, V is speed in a particular medium, C is the speed of light in a vacuum. N is the index of refraction. All right, so now we know we had an equation before, which we said V2 over V1. So let's substitute in now, C over N2 divided by C over N1. Well, obviously the C's are gonna cancel and we've gotta do the reciprocal here. So the equation we end up getting in terms of the wavelength in medium two is equal to the wavelength in medium one times the index of refraction of medium one over the index of refraction of medium two. All right, so as I said before, um, we're gonna look at these reflected pulses or waves. The incident wave hits the barrier between two media. 
but in the situation A, N2 is greater than N1. That means that second medium is uh, more dense. So you notice that the reflected wave is out of phase. We say it's pi shifted, and we're going to say that the, it's out of phase by half a wavelength. When you look at the incident wave in B and you look at its reflected wave, they're in phase. There's no shift because your N2 is less dense than your N1. So here, this picture, and it's gonna, I'm going to mention this on the slides, um, that the angles look big here, but they're not. They're pretty very close to the normal, but just so that you get a better picture of what's going on here. Light striking a thin film is partially reflected, ray one, and partially refracted at the top surface. So you can see, comes in, okay? It's gonna be reflected, ray one, but then partially, some of it's gonna be refracted. The refracted ray is partially reflected at the bottom surface and emerges at ray two, okay? So these rays will interfere in a way that depends on the thickness of the film and the indices of refraction of the various media. So this is the thin film in question. So we're going to look at the thickness, basically, of this intermediate medium, the one that's in between. All right, so if the waves are in phase, they will interfere constructively and cause a strong reflection. If they are out of phase, they will interfere destructively and cause a weak reflection or no reflection at all. So the path length difference of the reflected waves is this delta D, we'll say, is our path length difference, is going to be two times the thickness because the second wave travels through the film of thickness T twice. Okay, it has to come down and then go up. So the path difference. Now, like I said, these are pretty much vertical lines. They're very close to being vertical. So this difference in path lengths of rays one and two is just gonna be the path length of D2 minus the path length of D1, which we know this difference then is gonna be two times the thickness. So like I said, the angles in the diagram are extremely large compared to the actual angles since the rays are actually almost perpendicular to the surfaces. The possible phase change leads to two situations. If neither or both waves have a phase change due to reflection, the net addition to the path length difference is zero. The effective path length difference is going to be two times the thickness. All right, so let's take a look. So what if there's no pi shifts? Okay, well, let's think about in order for that to happen, N2 has got to be less dense than N1, and N3 has got to be less dense than N2. Okay, so you can see that N3 is going to be uh, the least dense of all. So N1 was our most dense. So what's happening here is effectively the path difference is just going to equal 2t, okay? No pi shifts whatsoever. Well, what if there's two pi shifts? All right, so say n2 is greater than n1, but then n3 has got to be greater than n2. So it's going to look something like this. n2 is greater than n1, n3 is greater than n2. Well, now, because they're pi shifted, the difference in path length, what's you're going to add a half a wavelength because they're out of phase. So we're going to say instead of just D2 minus D1, we're going to say D2 plus a half a wavelength minus D1 plus a half a wavelength is going to be that effective path difference. So if you look at the math here, you're going to see that the half wavelengths cancel. So we end up just getting D2 minus D1 equals 2T. Okay. Well, now the possible phase change leads to two situations. Let's look at situation two. If only one wave has a phase change due to the reflection, the effective path length difference is increased or decreased by one half wavelength. So you're going to see either 2t plus a half a wavelength, 2t minus a half a wavelength. So let's see what happens. So let's say only ray one is pi shifted. So if that's to happen, 
N2 has a greater value than N1, but N3 is less than N2 because we're not going to pi shift here for ray 2. So N2 is greater than N1, but N2 has to be greater than N3. So once again here, you're going to do a D2 minus D1, but here, since our second ray wasn't uh, shifted, we'll just say D2 minus our first ray was. So we've got to add that half a wavelength. All right, so when you go and do the math here, you kind of manipulate. Now, we've already established that D2 minus D1 is basically two times the thickness. So we're going to replace this D2 minus D1 with two times T, the thickness of this thin film, but then minus a half a wavelength. All right, well, what if ray two is pi shifts? It's pi shifted. So if ray two is pi shifted, then we know N3 is greater than N2. But if ray one is in, in phase, then we know N1 is greater than N2. Okay, so N1 is greater than N2, but N3 is greater than N2. So here, ray two is pi shifted, and we, we do the D2 minus D1 to get that effective path difference. So we're going to add the half a wavelength to our D2, because that was pi shifted, minus D1, manipulate so that we end up getting D2 minus D1. Remember, that's going to be two times the thickness. Now we're going to add a half a wavelength here. 